with us and we ask that you will fight with us. Lord, give me wisdom as he delivers the message that you've given him that some lost soul that's here tonight might be saved. Yes, yes, might get all Lord. closer to you. Yes, Lord, you for all that you've done yes, and all that you're going to do. And we pray these things in your presence. Amen. 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 All right. You got your Bibles tonight. Turn over to Romans. Use this scripture, uh, quoted this scripture many, many times. Don't remember, some of you marked your Bible where I preach. You might have this wrote down. I don't remember preaching Romans 10. I don't remember using this scripture as a topic to a message, but the Lord has laid this on my heart, and I'm going to share it with you. Thank you for your testimonies. I believe they come from the heart. I uh, had a man telling me this week, he was uh, talking about their church that uh, could not get anybody to testify. He said, folks, just comes in and says, hard to get them to shut up, you know, to start the service. And then after service starts, they'll fold their arms, Ricky, and sit there and will not testify. I thank God for your testimonies. I thank God for your shouts. Uh, boy, if folks that shout like some of you do in some churches of kids, they'd have to go to counseling. They sure would. Every time, uh, that's the truth. That's the truth. You know, you let trauma happen at school, and boy, the least little thing, they'll call in counselors. Each school system has got counselors on the payroll when something happens in a certain school or school area they bring those counselors in I don't know what Pitt County does I kept batting up her at Yawley Bridge I kept her <laughs> tore up I, <laughs> she was bald, more bald headed than me buddy up there. but uh, I, I thank God there's still a shout Oh, yeah. I, I thank God it's still something to shout about. It gets real. Uh, folks will shout. And I, I believe that with all my heart. Some of the, the best Christians I know is quiet and don't say a whole lot. But I believe for the shouters and different people, some people shout. And uh, that's like Ricky. He gets loud and carried away. Teresa don't carry on like that. Uh, does that mean Teresa ain't saved? No. Yeah. No, that's just the personality that God given us. And uh, so I thank God for all that he's done. I thank God through time, Ricky, he's uh, preaching is easier for me. I was sharing with the church today. Uh, used to be. Uh, I, I believe we need to be humble as Christians. Oh, yeah. I really do. That's oh, one yeah. of the ingredients yes. of being a good Christian. Oh, yeah. But I also believe that we need a backbone. I believe a preacher needs to be humble, but he also needs a backbone. Folks used to call me to preach uh, revivals or, or, or funerals. And buddy, I'd be a nervous wreck that I was going to offend somebody. I would try to bridle my spirit, try to hold the spirit back, or muzzle the spirit uh, that I wouldn't offend nobody. And buddy, here lately, uh, and, and I told him today, I said, you're going to get what I got that God gives me. Amen. And I said, I'm going to preach just like God gives me. If you don't like it, do not call me no more. Praise the Lord. That's the way I feel. I've had them, Tammy can tell you, I've had them to give me directions, instructions, no more. Amen. I don't tell them how to live their life. I can instruct them. I don't tell them how to drive their car. And they're not telling me how to preach. Praise the Lord. You don't like it if the Lord uh, puts it on my heart to give an invitation in a funeral. Don't call dumb Harold. Yes, sir. Because if the Lord tells him, he's going to give one. Praise the Lord, Trevor. I'd hate to think that I hindered somebody from being saved. Because I didn't want to uh, 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 give an invitation. So I just let them, now I just tell them the way it is. I'm my own way. Yeah, I'd look awful silly if I'd get up here and put a dress on, wouldn't I? That'd be the same way if I'd get up here and try to preach funny. 
right. being the preacher that I am. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. All right. Romans chapter 10. I, this shouldn't be too long. You, you said that a million times, Richard. Well, I, I don't believe it is, but there's something. Uh, sometimes we overlook things, church. God bless you. And uh, I, I do. I can speak for the rest of you. How many of you this week the power was off? How many of you know that the power was off? It's been off for several hours. Still tried to turn the light oh, switch yeah. on. Yeah. I wore it out. Yeah. Every, every time I... Kiki, you're going to get in trouble. Uh, every time I'd go in a room knowing that there wasn't no power, I'd flip a switch. And uh, uh, knowing that the power wasn't on. How many is glad to be saved tonight? Do you know what it is to be saved? Yeah, I do. You ask most people, you say, what is it, uh, what, what is it being saved? Save me from hell. Well, I'm going to break saved down tonight, and it's going to bless you. It really is. Bible said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might, what? Be saved. Remember that. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge. Now, did you get that? My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, he said, he's still talking about, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now, he wanted them to be saved. They didn't have knowledge. They had a desire. Yeah. They had a zeal, and a zeal was serious. That's a serious desire. Yeah. They wanted to please God. Yeah. But, boys, they was missing something. Yeah. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Church, how many times do we miss out on a blessing? Oh, how many right. times, as Ricky was talking about, how many times are we missing oh, yeah. the goodness and yeah. the fullness of yeah. serving God oh, yeah. because we're not breaking this yeah. thing down, thinking that we know all about it, oh, yeah. and we're not even realizing yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Walking in there by habit, oh, yeah. not even yeah. thinking, just going by habit, I was flipping that switch. Yeah. We're, we serve the Lord sometimes through custom, through habit. Yeah. Listen, oh, this, we, we, we get in a, 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 a repetitious rut, yeah. and we don't even realize what we're doing. Right. Said for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the men which do up those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep. That is, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which what? We preach. That it, listen now. This is a scripture. If you've been saved five years, you ought to know. Uh, right here, I tell the young Christians, this is the best tool in witnessing and and uh, trying to win somebody, I want you to mark this chapter and the next two verses. Chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. But you can tell a sinner this, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou what? Shall be saved. For with the heart Man believeth, isn't that right? Unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But we can believe, Ricky, all we want to. I, I, the devil even believes. He sure does. You go to the devil today and say, is there really a God? And the devil, or Rufus, Lu Lucifer, and uh, daddy, what was the daddy called? Slewfoot? Daddy called him Slewfoot. You'd say, Slewfoot, is there a devil? He'd look you in the eye and he'd 
say, there sure is a God. Yes, sir. There sure is a God. Oh, but the scripture said down there, it, uh, with the heart, man believeth unto salvation. All right, preacher, are you saved yet? No, you're not saved yet. What gets you saved? Oh, the Bible said that with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What are you talking about? That's when a man stands and says, Leah, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that Jesus rose from the dead. But when salvation comes, is when a man says, the Lord has wonderfully saved me and forgiven me of my sins. I confess salvation. That's when salvation comes to us. Verse 11, for the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be what? Ashamed. Ashamed. Yes. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Yes. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what shall, shall be saved? Yes. Now, how many saved tonight? Do you know what it is to be saved? Let's break it down. You remember as I was preaching the revival, most of you, probably everybody here uh, heard it. And I, I, I said it a couple times uh, after I, we think we know stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, we oh, think we, we, we you, you've used that word. They think they know, know it all. Oh, yeah. yeah, they think they know it all. They think oh. they know everything. Oh. And a lot of times we do. Yeah. We sure do. I, I, I told you many times about for a long time and didn't ask and didn't know. I just supposed. Boy, that's what the Bible said to study to show thyself approved. Yeah. You remember me telling years ago when we was kids and and uh, we'd get out of the church and I could, I could get, and I worried. I was a worry ward. I still worry. But I worried about my parents' health. I worried about my daddy while he was at work. And my daddy had a nervous breakdown one time and I worried over him a lot and worried if he, I, I knew when he couldn't sleep or he, he was having problems with his nerves and I worried. We'd go somewhere. I'd worry while we was going if our little house would burn down. I worried all the time. It wasn't much, but it was our house. Praise the Lord forever. Daddy gave six hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars for our first house that we owned up Jody. There was one bedroom, one kitchen, and one living room, and a pantry and a toilet. You know what Daddy done? Took that little pantry and made us a bathroom. We had our own bathroom. Our first house was a chicken house that they converted. And boy, we didn't have much. That first house we got for $800. When we went to look at it, Daddy fell through the front porch floor. It was rotten, and boy, folks didn't think it was much. But we thought, and, and our yard was a gob pile. You know what a gob, a gob is? Gob is byproducts of coal. That's a scratch. But it was our yard. Praise the Lord. I didn't want that little shanty. Daddy called it a shanty, and it was a shanty. I didn't want it to burn down. And I was proud of it. But I was talking, and I talked so many times. Mommy is all the time talking about her girdle killing her. And I thought a girdle was a disease. And later in life, I worried for nothing that a girdle was to hide her big belly. And praise the Lord forever. Glad it wasn't a disease. But listen to me. We think we know it all. And we think we, we, we worry over things. And if we knew the scripture, we wouldn't worry as much. But if we study the word of God, our faith would be increased, Lee. And we wouldn't worry as much. During the revival down dark mind, I was a study and meditating. And boy, I'll tell you what, every time I get to meditate, uh, some of you might know what I'm talking about, but I get to thinking even at home, uh, uh, when, on when, I, you, I can take you down there and prove it to you. On Wednesday evening, I get more phone calls on Wednesday evening than I get of any weekday of the week. 
Sunday afternoon is the same way. Why? Because the enemy is trying to interrupt my mind. Yeah. I got over to Curry's today and I told Randy, I said, we was back there getting ready for the funeral. I said, pray over me. I said, the devil's got my mind to go on a million miles an hour. And we got to have a mind, Ricky. We got to slow down and think on the good things of God. But as I was preaching the revival, it was probably Monday or Tuesday of that week. I was thinking about smiling and grinning. Now, folks that don't daydream, they don't have no fun at all. Daydreaming, I've said before, was the only way that got me through 13 years of 12 grades in public school. I would sit there and it didn't matter what the teacher was talking. I'm glad the kids is out of school. And you other kids that's in school, stick your fingers and ears for three minutes. And uh, But uh, that's how I made it. Boy, I, I hated school. And I'd get to daydream and I'd think about things. Lord. I'd sit there. I had this one teacher said, you really enjoy my teaching, don't you? I said, I sure do. <laughs> she had no idea where my mind was at. And she thought I was enjoying her. Maybe folks have does me that way while I'm preaching. But anyway, I think they're enjoying my preaching. They're thinking about going to fish in the mar. I hope we're going to kill a bear or a deer. But anyway, I was down there and and uh, I was working that day, and I got to daydreaming, and I got to thinking about, and here I am in my 50s, and I never, I didn't know the difference between a simple thing as a smile and a grin. So I got home, and I went into my office, and Zach laughs about my office. I got two offices. It's a coffee table and a nightstand. I got all my books and all that stuff piled together, and it's in order. Uh, for me, I know where everything's at. If somebody... Somebody comes in there and moves things around, or Liz moves my shoes, uh, they're in trouble. But anyways, I run into my office there, and I got my, my dictionary out, and everybody talking about smiling. I knew there was a relationship there, Lee. I knew there was some kindred spirit between a smile and a grin. I've heard grin too many times, so first of all, I looked up smile and got the definition of it. And a smile is a sign of happiness or content. But grin, listen to me. I looked up grin and Webster said that grin was a broad smile. Praise the Lord. So I said right then and there, I believe the Lord will give you more than a smile. I believe you can get so close to the Lord you can grin. Praise the Lord forever. But anyway, I got to ponder this week on being saved. Are you saved? Yeah, I've been saved a long time. I, I, do you know what it is to be saved? Yeah, I know what it is to be saved. Being saved gives me peace, joy, and contentment. Peace gives me hope in a world that has no hope. But you know what? This week I've been studying on what, what being saved meant. Now I want you to listen just a little bit. Webster describes saved or to save or to be saved. Uh, Webster in number one said to rescue. Listen, any man forever. I'm glad I'm saved, Omer. I'm glad I'm saved. Being saved or to save somebody means to rescue, listen to me, or preserve from harm or danger. How many is glad that they're saved? Praise the Lord forever. Yeah, I'm not going to hell. I've got peace that surpasses all understanding. I've got joy because I'm saved. But boys, after I was saved, I was rescued and I was preserved from harm and danger. Praise the Lord forever. You think that's good? Yeah, that's good. This lady gets better. Number two, Webster said to save for someone to be saved means to preserve. Listen, this is real good, Zach. Said being saved or saved something means to rescue or to preserve for future use. Oh, bless the people of the Lord. I'm glad that the Lord wanted to save me, not only for my benefit or my good. He saved me, Ronnie, for future use. What does he want? I'm going to be part of the number that no man can number that will spend eternity around the throne of God, bringing praise and glory to God Almighty. He's got me preserved for future use. Yeah.
again. We ought to go out of here with a bigger shout than we came in with today. Say, boy, are you glad you're saved? Boy, you don't know all the benefits yet. I'm going to fill you in and the rest of us. Number three, Webster said, be saved or to save is to present loss or waste. How many's got more than they ever had? Oh, listen, my life was going down the tube. My life was, listen, wasted away. But the Lord saved me. He rescued me, Lee. And uh, listen, I'm not wasting away no longer. Oh, I'm not spoiling. No, sir. I don't stink. I'm not ugly. He beautifies the meek with salvation. Glad I'm saved, aren't you? Are you, are you glad you're saved? Amen. Oh, all this gets better. It gets better. You know what else it is to be saved? You know what happens when we're saved? And they can't nobody else save us but the Lord. They could nobody else redeem us but Jesus Christ. I tell you what, my daddy, listen, my daddy loved me. And Lee, he could have stabbed himself. Or he could have took a meat cleaver and cut his head off. I know that sounds gory. But I'll tell you what, drained every bit of his blood out, poured it all over me, and it would have just made me a mess. But the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all one right. Are you happy to be saved, church? Webster said to save somebody or to save something, amen, means to treat carefully in order to preserve. How do you know that, Zach? The Bible said that he's long suffering, not willing that any should perish. Oh, well, if it had been anybody else, Lee, oh, about the first time he spoke to me and I wasn't obedient. Y'all know how it is. And you know how you look at other people's children. I look at other people's children. I said, if that was my kids, I'd jerk my belt off. Uh, and, and I'd tan their hide and I'd wear them out. But we'll look at our children and why through love we're long suffering and we'll keep forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. Y'all remember what I told my mother. My mother and dad that went through so much with my brother. And I told them, I said, Y'all done enough. You spent enough. And you need to cut him off. Mommy said, Easy for you to say. He's not your son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How in the world could he do that? He loved them. He wanted to save Praise the Lord. He loved them. Yeah, that's good preaching. Yes, Praise man. the Lord. It's not mine, but the Lord. I'm happy to be saved. Oh, yes, yes sir, Ricky. No wonder, Ricky. I, 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 I didn't join the church. No, sir, Ricky. That burns me. Here's something else I've said I don't understand. It. Preachers will say, boy, I had a good revival. I had three saved and six rededicated. Boy, you either in or out. Praise the Lord forever. I'll tell you, I'm glad to be I'm actually on y'all. Come on. You know what I had to do? The Bible said I had to do my first works over. I had to get saved, praise the Lord. Amen. I give her up. You're right. Yeah, the Lord didn't take it away from me. I give it back to him. Amen. Yeah, he didn't want to take it either. You're right. But I said, I don't want it no more. Amen. That's what folks does, Kinky, when they go back on the Lord. Here, I don't want the salvation no more. You take right. it back. Right. He won't force us on it. No. But to be saved or save somebody is to treat carefully in order to preserve. In theology, Webster says, to be saved is to deliver from sin or to redeem. I already knew that. I knew that I'd been redeemed. I already knew that I had been set free from sin. No wonder the Bible said to study the scriptures to show thyself approved. Praise the Lord forever. Yes, sir. I'm glad for the Lord. Yes. To be saved. 
means to be kept or to keep something or someone from danger. Boy, that made me shout, Lee. That made me shout. He's kept me from saving me. He's kept me from danger. I'm no longer, listen, walking on a tightrope wondering just when I'm going to fall into the pits of hell. But the hand of God reached further down than I could reach up and he set me free. I'm glad. Paul said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for, is for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Listen to me. They had no idea what they had a zeal for. They had no idea what was yearning and churning inside. But he wanted them to be saved. They knew there was something missing, but they needed to be saved. Amen. He said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Amen. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Yes. Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to, be, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh unto thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But boys, I'm glad I know what it is to be saved. I'm glad I know, listen, what saved means and what saved is made out of and how much God loved me. Yeah, till you get to digging, it don't sound as serious. And boy, I'm glad I'm saved and born again and preserved and kept from danger. And I'm, listen, preserved for later use. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. I thank you for saving me, Lord. It's a joy to be saved. I thank you, Lord, for the hope, Lord, that I have in you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this knowledge that I have of your saving grace. I'm glad, Lord, that I had the courage. Had the courage, Lord. I, 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 I know joining the church is good. Church membership is good. But, Lord, we need to be saved, as Paul said there. I'm glad I'm saved. Glad I'm set free, and I thank you. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless our church. I don't know the need of the congregation tonight, but I know one thing you're able, Lord, to take care of the problems and the cares and the burdens. Lord, you're able, Lord, to deliver. You're able to deliver, Lord, like nobody else can. As we've kind of had a theme, seems like every Sunday's got a theme, and today's theme has been you're in control. And I appreciate you, Lord, for being in control. Now, Lord, you can't control us till we submit unto you. You can't do nothing with us till we say, Lord, have thine own way. So I pray, Lord, that you would help us to study your word and grow in the grace and the knowledge of your truth. We would always look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. Blessed be your name forever. Amen and amen. amen. From the depths oh, of the earth, what is it? I cried so loud, and he couldn't hear me.
you enjoyed the preaching. Yes. Yes. If you didn't enjoy it, Paul, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I'm saved.